Hi, right, thank you. Uh, welcome to the Parks, Recreation, and Leisure Activities Committee meeting agenda for April the 4th, 2024 at 12 p.m. Charlottetown Council Chambers at City Hall. Order of business. Call the meeting to order. Item two, declarations of conflicts of interest. Hearing none. Item three, approval of agenda. Uh, Mr. Chair, I do have a question on the agenda. Okay. Um, I did uh, send an email just requesting to put on the agenda for today a discussion regarding um, uh, Simmons uh, and the recognition for Stu McFadden. I didn't see that on the agenda today. No, uh, we'll, we'll have that on for a future agenda item. Okay. Um, okay. Approval of agenda, adoption yeah. of the minutes. Just, just on that, Mr. Chair, did that go to, uh, Councilor Matard, did that go, go to all of committee and, uh, and staff? Your email, I, I... Uh, I put it to Frank, uh, Councilor Trio, uh, Mike White, yourself. Okay, okay. Well, could I ask, Mr. Chair, if we, if we don't put it under new business today, that uh, it would be uh, noticed to give n motion for the next meeting to have that on the, the that, agenda? That, that's what I said. It's going to yeah. be on our next agenda. Okay. Is that all right, Councilor Tart? Almost certainly. Thank you. Okay. Um, adoption of the minutes. Move. Yes. Second. Move. Second. Okay. Um, just, just Mr. Mr. Chair, just yeah. business arising. Sure. Just wanted to ask if our staff do have an update on the timelines for the construction of the. Uh, New Simmons Aqua Arena facility. He doesn't have to say it now, maybe during his report, but I just wanted to make sure that was hopefully in the report because I, I did ask. Thank yep. you. Yeah. Okay. Moving to reports. A. Charlottetown Knights Major Under 19 Male Hockey Team request to move to Simmons Sports Arena, Center for 2024 25 season. This was brought up at our last council meeting. Uh, We've asked staff to go back and have a look to see if there's any uh, flexibility in scheduling under the premise that it would not bump any other uh, programming, uh, any community user groups, whether it be hockey, figure skating, or any other community groups. So uh, I guess we'll ask, um, we'll ask Mike for... Um, uh, an update to that request. Yeah. So I, I went back and I did speak with the affected users and um, nothing's changed on their, their end as far as uh, wanting to lose any of their current ice times. I went through other schedule options. I spoke to Carrie again. Uh, the carry complex and there's it, it just comes down to whether we we bump or we don't there's nowhere for them to go if we if we okay. play re, replace or move them so I, I did what I could um, our staff's position is that uh, we're gonna continue with the same recommendation that we deny for for this season based on those reasons that we do not want to bump current users that have been at the Simmons for multiple years <coughs> Thank you, Mike. Any questions? Okay. None here. No. Okay. So everyone is okay with the staff's recommendations? Uh, yep. No, I'm not. Okay. I, I, yep. I, again, I was asking if we could look at trying to make it work. Is this still going to be a one-year trial for the just leaving, leaving the schedule as is, Michael? 
or through the chair, sorry. Is it a one, one year trial or are you, is it a done deal forever a day? I'm not going to say it's a done deal forever. Obviously, things can change as we move forward, for, certainly for this upcoming initial season, that it would stay status quo. Again, I don't want to you know, look too far into the future, but if something arises where there is a chance a group could end up releasing some ice time, there's all, all sorts of things that could happen, but for this coming season, no one's willing to give up any ice time, and we don't want to bump anybody out. So. I can only commit to this one first season that we would like to stay the status quo. Just a second question, Mr. Chair. I know I have two questions. So the second question is, I thought in at, at our last meeting we were looking at, I think the manager stated that it could be a one year, let's just try it for one year and then reevaluate it. That's, that was something. Yeah, yeah we can reevaluate next year for sure. Like that's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not close. We're not closing the door forever on this idea. Just, for this initial season, we're recommending to stay at the status quo. So again, sir, if it's only for one year to, to, and then to review it, uh, I'll support it because that's my understanding right now. Just want to get that in the minutes too. Thank you. Okay. Good. You okay with that? Yep. Nope. Okay, uh, so uh, have just a going over. to make some comment. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mr. Chair, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I think everybody would love to help these people that are in this group. I think we, we know a lot of them. We know they're good people, and I know, you know Dr. Gordy Vex has been involved in hockey for a long time. Um, having said that, I know that there's probably nobody better than Mike White in dealing with uh, scheduling. Um, and then I read through this, and I, you know, when, when you see that's going to affect the Charlottetown minor hockey schedule, the Charlottetown figure skating schedule, the Charlottetown can can power skate program it's just not something that, that, that we can agree to right now uh, I also see uh, that Mike reached out to these groups um, if anything they were look they're looking for more ice time and I see here there's other groups that, that also wanted to, to make this new rink their home so um, unfortunate but I guess it is what it is uh, if pretty tough for us to make a decision to uh, give approval for one team by taking away from, from another three user groups. So um, thank Mike for taking another another look at this um, and see what see what next year brings. But thanks. Again, Mr. Chair, that's the one year review too. So that's 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 what I'm hearing from Councillor Bernard is that there will be a review after the first year. Yeah. Because there will be, as you know, Councillor Twill, there will be lots of people that will want to use this new facility because it is new. It's going to be, as you've said many times, state-of-the-art rink. So, you know, there'll be lots of good sales and lots of good revenue coming from it. That, that's true, but I'll, I'll reiterate what I stated before. As long as none of our community groups and our uh, manager has made that quite clear, and, and I agreed to have a second look at it uh, at our last meeting, but... Uh, with the understanding that no community groups would lose ice time or uh, be put in a precarious situation. So I, I'll i accept a motion on the floor. Mr. Chair, I do have a question. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Mutart. Uh, just, you know, out of curiosity, um, when we have our, our facilities, whether it be Cody Banks or Simmons, uh, when we have user groups who are looking to utilize that space, regardless of what uh, sport it is, do they generally come to council for approval to use the uh, facility? Well, I think in, in this particular case, uh, Council Matart, um, because it is a new facility, uh, the uh, Knights hockey team was looking for uh, the opportunity. They um, made request mm -hmm. to the Parks and Recreation staff. Um, so staff decided to bring that uh, recommendation forward to the committee for the committee to entertain and, and you know, that's, that's fine. Um, but um, uh, again, um, because this is a new facility, they, they probably saw it as a new opportunity. 
and, 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 and probably wanted to take advantage of that. It, you know, it is a brand new facility and they wanted to make it their new home uh, to, leave, um, to leave the carry facility. Uh, but as uh, Mike has pointed out, uh, you know, if, if we were to bring them in, then some of our community groups would, would lose ice time, and uh, we're, we're, we're not in the business of doing that. Uh, a lot of these groups have been uh, using Simmons Sports Center as, as their home for a number of years, and we're not going to, uh, uh, we're not going to take away ice time from them. Yeah, no, I agree. Thank you, Councillor. Um or chair, um, if you could, uh, and the reason then I do support the recommendation uh, by the uh, by the management team, uh, you know, and, and for all of the reasons mentioned here again, and I mentioned these before, I just, if we're going to revisit this in a year, if it comes back to us, just want to make sure that it comes back to the committee level, not just a uh, user, uh, user group going to uh, management team and then deciding that they can go through uh, that's that's fair. So that's fair. Yeah. So we're saying that we'd like to come back here in a year. If the application comes back in a year, we would come back and discuss again at this committee level um, and see where we are in a year's time, maybe. No, oh, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. Do I have a mover? Oh. I'll move it. Second. Yeah. <coughs> Motion carried? Yep. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Uh, our next resolution, or I'm sorry, our next item on the agenda is a resolution to award request for proposals for the 2024 Security Patrol at City Parks and, <coughs> excuse me, Victoria Park. And I believe Nancy. Okay, go ahead. All right, thank you, Chair. I'll uh, speak to the high level, just what's in the, uh, the backgrounder and the attached resolution. If there's any technical questions, Nancy can speak to it. Okay. Uh, we went out to RFP uh, to hire a security patrol for our city parks and Victoria Park, which is something that we've been doing since uh, 2000. How long ago was it? Goodness, it wasn't here. We've been doing it for a number of years. Oh, this since 2010. So this is something we've been doing since 2010. Uh, so you'll see the staff recommendation is to award this to Atlantic Private Protection Services, APPS, in the amount of $50,064 plus applicable taxes. Uh, and they'd be to provide security patrol for the overall city parks. Uh, but we also have our foot patrol in Victoria Park uh, that we have, there's two, uh, two personnel that, are, uh, that do evening patrol Thursday to uh, Sunday, uh, and that there is the option for us that we retain the option to uh, extend this for two additional years uh, at the same price if mutually agreed to. Uh, so outside of that, you'll see all the details where sort of uh, where the foot patrol takes place, which is Victoria Park. It runs from May 10th to the September 20th for 19 weeks, uh, Thursday to Sunday, six hours at evening for a total of 20 hours, 24 hours per week. Uh, in addition to the foot patrol, uh, we also have it on when we have holidays on Mondays uh, throughout the sum summer as well. And then there's the vehicle patrol, which is uh, just one personnel, which travel to city park locations that are identified during the evening uh, and the night for eight hours per day for 15 weeks for a total of 56 hours per week. Uh, the vehicle uh, will be enforced, like I said, seven days a week and it goes May 27th to the 9th. And the hours will vary depending on the activities that are taking, in, in, taking place in the parks and when sunset times are. So it allows a bit of flexibility. Uh, they do provide daily reports, uh, including incidents, which they'll provide to the Parks and Recreation Office, and a monthly summary uh, will be submitted to the department on the first uh, day of the month. And you'll see the other bidders that bid there. But yeah, so this has been something that has been in place since 2010 and has been very beneficial to the city. Thank you. The uh, floor is open. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Councilor Tark. Thank you. 
Uh, to the chair through the manager, um, I assume the security here will also provide uh, security to the Jogias Park. Um, just kind of wondering what thoughts have been given to some of the challenges and circumstances that may be encountered in that area by a third party security firm uh, in relation to the uh, policing that's happening down around that area actively now. So, uh, Councilor Matart, uh, we right now, uh, the Park Superintendent Nancy McMahon has been working with City Police on identifying some some uh, sort of res restrictions around Joe Gates Park, you know, timelines and whatnot, you know, when people can be in the park. Uh, but the Park Patrol will sort of, they could provide some support that maybe when there's police not there, they do a drive-by kind of thing, but it will mainly, that area will fall under City Police because of the... Uh, they're going to be there there more often, and there'll be more uh, more patrol there. So our, we'll be sort of focusing on all the other parks around the city. But it could be that if an incident come up that we needed to be dropped by at certain times, our park patrol could do that and report it to the police. Okay, thank you. And you know, I think that I think it's important that those discussions uh, happen, and uh, you know, to ensure that we have continuity down there regarding, you know, some who's got authority to do what and say what and address certain things. And of course, uh, you know, we would encourage if your, uh, if the uh, security company is uh, identifying issues that they log those and report those as well. Um, and back to, uh, to, to yourself and to your group. Uh, yes, Council Matarchi, and that's what they'll be doing. Uh, they'll be reporting to our department and uh, the Parks Department will be uh, you know, reporting anything to the police that needs to be dealt with. If something is an emergency needs to be dealt with right away, uh, the Park Patrol can reach out directly to City Police. So, Mr. Chair, Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, can I just follow up on Council Matarit's point? Now, with the <clears throat> the relocation of the Provincial Community Outreach Wellness Center, there and with summer coming, uh, it does increase the traffic of uh, persons coming from other provinces, from other areas of the region, and you, you can see that increase throughout the city. <clears throat> I know I have a brother and a sister, two sisters that live down in King Square, and the security down there, it's, it's more or less a drive-by, and I, I think what Councillor Matard is saying, I agree with him, that I think we need boots on the ground, so uh, I, I don't know if that's part of the contract, but if it's just drive-by, then, um, you know, maybe we'll need to increase. We, we will have an additional 11 police officers after this budget goes through, so that means more boots in the ground. But just the drive-by is really reporting to the police. Um, and there is a lot of concern down there, uh, as Councilman Tart knows, on Beach Street with the relocation that we'll need a lot more eyes, ears, and boots on the ground <coughs> to ensure safety and security in the area. So your worship, so yeah, so a lot of that I think is gonna be underneath the police. There's going to be, they're gonna be down there more. Right now you can see the presence of them down there right now. Uh, our park patrol will be a second set of eyes uh, that if they see something, they forward it on to the police. Uh, they, they are a vehicle, but they do get out of their vehicle to, you know, to indicate that they checked at this site. And it could be something like we could ask that you get out of your vehicle to walk around a certain area if there's if we're experiencing certain types of incidents in uh, in areas. But they're they're one individual, so it would be they wouldn't be necessarily going out and approaching individual no. approaching. But it's more or less they're sort of that eyes they go out check yes this is an issue and they would reach out to the police and call or they'd let us know. But they're excuse me, Jeff, yeah. Sorry. And just second point on that second question, Mr. Chair, is that. Uh, yeah, I know they, they do the 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 the, fold, the 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 check with uh, I think it's on in King Square. It's on the one of the the main uh, or the central uh, light lamp post, and I know they do that. But that's all they do. So I I think Frank, just I know one person, but just out on the ground. And if they do see something that is uh, something that should be reported, it it just gives them more of a sense of. S safety and security and a comfort of, you know, 
there are eyes and ears and security police presence in the area that's protecting protecting their interest. Yes, Your Worship. So we'll remind our park patrol, but like you said, it is one individual. But like you know, if they do see something and it is of an illegal nature or a nature of concern, then we'll make sure that they contact the police so that it can be addressed as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, and it, uh, thank you, Your Worship, for reinforcing that. So th this is park patrol, right? We're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So they'll be reporting on what's what's in the parks. Um, and I'm pretty sure with part of the agreement with, with moving the outreach center to where it was, it's going to be foot patrols that are going to be walking within the 20-minute radius. So there should be foot patrols down there. And I guess they're, they're moved in there now, I, I assume. Are they the outreach center? Yeah. Down on Park Street. So, yeah. So I just want, didn't want to confuse that the, the park patrol is just for parks. They won't be... They won't be reporting on anything going on in the streets. They're just the parks. Okay. No, no, it's just the parks, and yeah. it's it's the okay. Joe Giz Park that uh, Councilor Matarp mentioned. No, I understand that, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to clarify my point, is that uh, there is concern that, you know, there could be, you know, possible this, possible that. Those eyes and ears and that presence will just reinforce that safety and security will be a priority for that park or any of our parks, especially that one. Thank you. And I'll move it. Your yeah. And just to provide a little further comment there to Councillor Bernard and uh, his worship, yeah. So it is the park, but what we're concerned is, say, that area, that there will be some uh, overflow into the park, individuals that are in that area, even down in other parks that are close by, uh, the squares, those kind of things. So our park patrol will keep an eye on that and be reporting any incidents so that it is addressed as soon as possible and it doesn't, doesn't uh, become an issue. So thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, and for, sorry, sorry, just further that, and then that's for after hours. So what 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 what, uh, what sparked my uh, piqued my interest in that is the fact that the park patrol is is somewhat after hours as well, right? So where we might see less of a presence in the evening, the week, and like in the after hours with police in the park areas, at least they have the um, your patrols there to see that. So that that was kind of what I was uh, aiming for as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I have a couple of points I'd like to bring up. Uh, let's start with Victoria Park. Um, I've always had a concern with, uh, you know, park patrols for just three or four days a week, Thursday to Thursday to what Sunday or Thursday? Yeah. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is not covered. I've always been a strong proponent of having uh, Victoria Park uh, security. Uh, seven days a week. Uh, there's more people in that park now than there ever was uh, during uh, during the day, during the evenings. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of traffic on the boardwalk. There's a lot of uh, activities taking place in the park. I, somewhere along the line, I think we need to expand our uh, park security in Victoria Park. Due to the fact that that park is extremely busy, that's a that's just like a national park for all intents and purposes. I mean, there's a lot of people there, uh, you know, whether it be down at the playground or at the ball fields, skateboard park, boardwalk, um, you know, just sitting down on the benches. There's a lot of things happening there, so I am. I would like to see, you know, that park patrol program expanded to seven days a week. So I don't know if there's still an opportunity to do that. Um, I'm willing to pass, have the motion pass here today and bring it to council. But I, I would certainly like to expand uh, the park patrol program. We'll start there. So I'll. Uh Chair Tweel, so I'll just provide comment that we do have our Park Ambassador Program that we start in late June, correct? Yeah, start in late June. And it's something we started, so they, they'll be in the park from 12 to 8 at Victoria Park, and more or less what they're there is to just inform people, uh, make sure everyone's sort of uh, adhering to the bylaws and the rules and whatnot, and you know, you don't have motorized vehicles that are going through a spot where they shouldn't be, that kind of thing. It has really been helpful. 
Um, it's also been providing information to people in the park as well, so that's been successful. So right now, the only sort of three days we don't have evening security is some Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We haven't had a whole lot of issues or concerns that we felt that we needed to have uh, have security in place. So it's more or less been the extra money to spend on that. We felt it was more important to have it there during the day uh, when there's a lot of users in the park and uh, just to make sure everyone is, you know, uh, using the park appropriately and that there's no, uh, no other issues or concerns, so. Well, again, I'll reiterate, you know, it's great to have the ambassadors program, but from 8 o'clock on, there's a lot of people in that park. I know because I'm there. Yep. There's a lot of people in that park. That boardwalk is full. And there's a, you know, the people park cars. They're, they're, it's, it's quite a gathering place. So uh, anyway, I'll, I'll just wanted to bring it up again. I, I think there's a, there's a discrepancy there, and it's something we need to, uh, we need to look at. So we'll, we'll gauge it as we move along. Um, in, into the summer. Yeah, I'm, I'm not done yet. Um, on the uh, on the uh, police presence down, you know, Beach Street, Park Street, more specifically, uh, Joe Gears Park. Uh, we have a commitment from the provincial government for six police officers. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen anything yet, so. Uh, whether it's this committee uh, or council meetings, I mean, there's a commitment that was made, and the six police officers were committed for that general area. So um, I wanted to bring that up. We still haven't got confirmation on that. Certainly nothing in writing. I don't know what the delay is, but nonetheless, uh, council passed resolutions to relocate the outreach center down to that uh, that new location, and there was a commitment made for the six police officers. So, um, again, no uh, no real commitment after the commitment was made in resolutions. And on the uh, patrols, uh, where you have one person driving in a car, I have received feedback, you know, in in previous years where you know they just go out, get out of the car, walk up, and they go to some device take their phone, the picture taken, and, and then leave. And residents in, 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 the, in the parks across the city are somewhat skeptical at that type of, uh, I don't know what you would call it, foot patrol or, not, or, or, or some park patrol uh, presence. Uh, I'm not sure what we need to do to uh, intensify our efforts. Maybe we need to hire more. I'm not, I'm not sure. We have a lot of parks in this city. And just to have someone get out of a car and go up and use their, their phone and take a picture and then just jump in the car to say they were there and then leave. I have heard co comments in previous years, so I don't know what we've done to uh, enhance our park, park patrol uh, presence across the city. I think that's just as important as Victoria Park as well. So I wanted to bring that up as well. Uh, Chair, <coughs> Chair Tweel, so yes, it will admit it, that we did have, on, on occasion, we have had hired security firms that weren't as diligent uh, as probably our current one is, which is good. Uh, this, uh, this company has, uh, the last three years, or last two years, has been the firm we've had hired, so they're getting the contract again. They have been much more efficient. Yes, that's how they record that they actually are at the park by using their uh, the little tab or thing that they kind of thing. But they they have been they have been reporting incidents. So the only way for them to do that is to actually be looking around the park area um, when there's nobody in a park or no one in an area. You know, they will just indicate that they were there and they wouldn't spend any length of time. But I know I've been at locations and I've seen them stop by and there's a number of people in the park and they do a do sort of a look around to make sure everyone is doing what they're supposed to be and not doing something you know that they shouldn't be in a park so uh in victoria park it is it's challenging at times in victoria park you have two individuals they're walking together they can't be in a 40 acre park in every location so there will be times that something could be happening they might not see it right away or they might not even see it at all but for the most part i think it has uh, has made a lot of improvements in the parks and areas um, and when we are made aware of incidents that are happening in a certain area, 
we will have the park patrol go by on a regular basis. And if it's something that needs to be uh, brought to the police attention, it will be brought to the attention right away, so. Okay, just to follow up on that, Frank. Um, can we get them to commit to doing a bit of a walkthrough as opposed to just going up and uh, you know, taking their phone, recording that they were there? Can we get them to do a bit of a walkthrough so the residents, even the folks that are uh, you know, living adjacent to the parks can see that they actually do a walkthrough as opposed to just recording the fact that they were there? Can we, can we get them to commit to, the, to do that? Because the, it's hard to, you know, how can you really see what's happening in the parks if you just go up to that device get it recorded, jump in the car and leave. I mean, can we not get them to do a bit of a walkthrough? Um, Chair Twill, so yeah, so the, part of the reason why we can't do that is because they're on their own. They're one individual, so they can't put themselves in a position where, you know, something could happen to them. So they usually are stay close proximity to their vehicle. They get out, they tap it, and then they'll stay there for a few minutes and look around to see what's happening. And they might even drive around the park kind of thing. but. They're not, the fact that they're on their own, that's the reason why we have two individuals in Victoria Park foot patrol, so they provide support to each other. So it's, that's the main, it's a safety concern, so. Councilor Tweel. Yeah. I think this is the point that Councilor Matarit's making about presence. Is, is that right, Councilor Matarit? I'm just trying to gauge what's, what's being said here. To drive around the park, like to drive around Joe Giz Park, that means you go down Edward Street, turn up Kent, then you'll have to swing back and go back down Edward and then go around in Grafton. It's, and that's a fairly big park. King Square, you can go down King Square and then cross over Weymouth. Frank, I don't know if the security is different elsewhere, and I know you keep, I know there's only one of them, but I know. We usually have, you know, police officers drive alone too. You're like, there's a lot of things going on here, which I just think that we've heard it over and over again. Presence is very important, and I think that's that's the point. I think I believe that Councillor Tweel and and Councillor Matard is making that we just need that presence, and it's I don't think it's always from the from the vehicle that the presence is is a comfort to residents that live in the area. I know from my family of my members of our family have stated that they just get up, do the phone check, back in the car. So um, I don't know what we can do, Frank. I, I don't know if that's the sort of the standard for all security companies or security agencies across the country, but something to look into. Um, Your Worship, so we will, we'll look into it more, yeah. but like it is, that is more or less the standard unless you have more personnel hired. So that's the biggest thing. What we, what we will like to speak to them to sort of, when they drive by to maybe not just speed by, I know they're trying to hit a lot of parks and whatnot in an evening depending what's going on. So to maybe, you know, to check, but also maybe stay there for a few minutes, have a look around and more visible. Some parks are more awkward because you can't uh, drive around the whole park how it's located. So they might only do two sides those kind of things as well. So but anyway, we, we will discuss with the uh, the company. This company has been very receptive to working with us and has, has done a really good job for us. So thank you. Mr. Chair, yes, just go one ahead. last point on that for me. Just one last point. I think my, you know, my objective here is, is to have a little bit more of a presence more than just a, a, a quick drive by uh, Joe Gays Park. I think it's inevitable there's gonna be some activity there and, uh, you know, in, in maybe in years past, it might have been sufficient just to do a quick drive-by. Uh, but I think knowing that extra additional presence is there uh, with the boots on the ground out in the, out in the property, uh, maybe doing a walkabout, would be beneficial in that area. Yes, I, I, well, yes I, I, I agree. Uh, particularly in the Joe Gears Park area, that we're walking down to... Uh, you know, where the new outreach center is, you, you can't view that from a car and just driving by. You just can't. You have to get out and you got to walk it. So, and then, you know, the manager says, um, you know, it's, it's hard for one person because they're by themselves. And I, I wouldn't want to uh, put them in a precarious situation because, uh, you know, it's very volatile. Sure. It's very volatile to to have one person walk through there that they're not familiar with 
and I understand that. I mean, I went through it for three years, the, the uh, repercussions and the consequences of the outreach center. Uh, you know, the community I represent was abandoned for three years, so I understand it perfectly well, Justin, our Councilor Matar. So our, our manager has heard this, and I'm sure that they're going to uh, uh, discuss this internally and, and to see what can be done to uh, have more of a presence. Yeah. So I, th I think your point is well taken, and I, sh I share you. with you in that. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I, I didn't I I think so, some you. of the language we're using here about past situations, I think it's pretty strong. Look, it's, this is the path forward. We just want more boots, more presence. That's what the yeah. councillor's asking for. That's, that's really what it is. Frank, I, I have seen these security personnel at, in and around Victoria Park and other areas. Yeah, they're by themselves. Maybe we have to do something to make it work better. That's, let's, this, now we're going down. <coughs> it's a new road. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, okay. it was always, uh, it was I'll, always I'll my, I'll move it. I'll move it. It was always my impression that, that the security that we had, they have a number of parks to check. So a lot of the parks, if there's nobody really in it, they go up and they do, do what they do with their camera to show that they were there. But if there's an issue going on, that they will report that issue to our police. They're not, they're not to engage, they're not trained to engage. So I, I think I was always led to believe, and it's, it's, I know it's worked in my, my area, where if there's issues going on in a park, they go and investigate that issue, find out what it is, and they report it to the police. The police should deal with it. So I think it's just the same thing. We have two patrols that are in Victoria Park. We have this car that, that that's the patrol around the park. So if there's an issue, it can also be called in. Staff will get them to check that particular park more often. But that's why we're hearing that they're not to get engaged. No, but if there's an issue in that park, they will go see what it is and they will report it. So. Okay. Uh, good discussion. I'll entertain the motion. Move by Matar. I'll second it. All in favor? I'll second. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Our next agenda item is a resolution to open Victoria Park Roadway interior lane as an active transportation pathway earlier this season. I think this is a great idea. So uh, what date are we looking at, Frank? So Chair Twill, so uh, yeah, you'll see the little background in front of you there. We're looking at April 10th, which is the day after Council. So once Council approves it uh, next uh, Tuesday, we would open it the next day. Um, and the, this has been something that uh, last year you'll in, you know that we actually changed it to now that it's called an active transportation pathway, which actually uh, does uh, enable more uses on the actual pathway. Previously, it used to just be for uh, you know your skateboarding, rollerblading, biking, those kind of things. Now it's actually expanded to be uh, any use of self-propelled, non-motorized transportation that relies on the on the use of human energy, such as walking, jogging, cycling, inline skating, mobile challenge users, i.e., wheelchairs. So, um, and this has been—it's uh, hard to believe until I look back. This actually. Uh, Closure has been happening and opening this pathway since 2009, so it's been around for a while. Uh, so yeah, so it normally was set May 1st, and we've left it at May 1st because the weather can be unpredictable. But in recent years, uh, three out of the last four years, uh, we've been actually able to open it earlier, and uh, this year we're saying April 10th. So, and it'll stay open until the end of October. Uh, we are looking at, like you said, will this become a permanent, uh, could this become permanent infrastructure? And that'll be something I'll bring back to council at a later date, committee and council. Well, uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, I know there are seniors now walking <laughs> in that lane with vehicle traffic, and they're using it as an active transportation pathway with the oncoming traffic, which is pretty dangerous. So I think the uh, sooner we get this um, shut down or open to, uh, you know, our different uh, different citizens that, that, that use this, whether it be walking, running, cycling, uh, multiple, uh, multiple usages. Uh, this, is, this is a great, uh, great venue in our park. Mr. Chair, that includes uh, 
mothers and fathers with baby carriages. But uh, add, adding to that, Mr. Chair, this Monday on the 8th, I've already spoken to the manager about uh, Eclipse 2024. Uh, that is happening on Monday. Public schools branches are, will be sending students home two hours early, earlier to uh, to uh, observe this this uh, once in 80 years, 100 years phenomenon. So I've asked Frank, if in the meantime, for the 8th of April, if we could just shut down the inside laneway between the end of Kent and where. Uh, where uh, traffic goes into the uh, into the tennis court to allow people to observe the eclipse 2024 because there are places across the country that are setting areas available providing areas for observation but again anyone that plans to use this observation area will be responsible for any uh, glassware or any uh, protection of their eyes not the city and I don't think that requires a resolution. I think the, the manager can make that uh, um, as an executive decision or an executive order. So um, I've, I've already spoken to him about it, and I wanted to bring it up here while we're speaking about it. So uh, your worship, uh, you are correct. So that would be a temporary closer for a short period of time. Yeah. So we are looking at that, uh, just speaking with Nancy there, so whether we just close a section up that you referred to yeah. in front of the Lieutenant Governors, we would just put up some barricades indicating that it's closed from probably in the afternoon, because I think that's when the event is uh, at, its, uh, at its height. So we would look at just closing it, and then we would remove it. We would have liked to put in the permanent closure by then, but because Council's not meeting till Tuesday, uh, I can do the temporary closure. I guess we just, uh, as this worship has indicated, there could be more people that are in the park and wanting to uh, sort of get a better viewing point and could sort of walk out in that area, which does tend to be a bit more higher traffic. So if we can slow the traffic down, I think it'd be great, or stop the traffic altogether, I think that'd even be better, so. I'll entertain a motion. Moved. Moved. Second. All in favor? All in favor. Okay. Yay. Was the vote? What? Was it 3A? Yes. Okay. Okay, we have information from uh, Seniors Engagement Committee. Any questions? No, we have uh, information from the Youth Engagement Committee minutes, February 15th. Doing a great job. Pardon me? DL's doing a great job. She's our main person with both committees, right? She's, DL? A, she's the point person? Yes, she is. Okay. Okay. Uh, introduction to new business. I'm going to ask staff. Uh, I'd like to have a special meeting on parks and recreation venues, like the green space in front of Founders Hall. And I'd like you to bring um, at a special meeting of the Parks and Recreation Committee a chronological uh, list of requests that were entertained by the Parks and Recreation Committee in previous years. I think we entertained, uh, Council Bernard, I know you referenced one, referenced one yesterday in an email exchange, and uh, I know that we've dealt with uh, requests in previous years, and it was brought through this committee, and this committee entertained that. So um, maybe we can have that uh, special meeting uh, of the committee next, uh, I don't know, week to 10 days. So get all that information together, if you could, please, Frank, and then uh, send it out to all the members of the, of the committee so we can have uh, a good, uh, good discussion as to where we're at and, and why I believe this committee is mandated to deal with the green space and any parks and recreation venues that are responsibility of parks and recreation. Move for adjournment? No, no, I... Uh, I thought under new business I'd get an update on the uh, timeline for the construction of the uh, oh, I'm sorry. yeah oh no go good point and and just Ms. mr. chair th there's one other thing Frank um, we did order the new electric Zamboni that's been ordered <coughs> and Mike or mr. chair is will it be arriving like I'm getting emails from and I'm forwarding them to uh, forwarding the emails to parks and recreation about it a competitor, like we will have something in October, November for the opening with a new Zamboni. I'm just, that was a, 
um, supplementary oh, concern. New Zamboni doesn't arrive at the opening. The New Zamboni it, it'll will be in arrive. December. It, was, it was stated at our last council meeting. The New Zamboni will arrive, I believe, in December. So, Chair Tweel, you are correct. That's what was indicated in the resolution, uh, Your Worship. But they indicated that's what they put down because they didn't want to put a date that they maybe couldn't meet. But they are working uh, more aggressively. They're trying to see if they can have it here earlier, yeah. potentially, you know, middle of October, early November. So, but they committed December first. But they indicated that they are trying to get it here earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and, and, and just, Mr. Chair, there is a. a a, a, a weight difference between your propane Zamboni, Zamboni and your electric Zamboni, and I think it's somewhere in the area of 4,000 pounds heavier. That is never an issue for rinks because of you know the, the solid ice. A concern come up to me, but there are many other rinks using electric, electric uh, Zambonis that, again, adds to the net zero uh, target that we have for the for the uh, for the new Simmons Aqua Arena facility. So no need to. I can just indicate or see the indication from Mike. Don't worry. So just a timeline, Frank. Do we have something? Can we get it? So your worship. So right now I have a high level sort of milestone dates proposed uh, that they're driving towards. And uh, so the overall project schedule is provided has been provided by Fitz and Snow. They've sort of been the main contractor. Uh, so the ice surface concrete slab uh, will be in place. Uh, the curbing, it'll be curbing, curing, sorry, curry, curing and ready for boards May 15th, 2024. So right now, if you go into the facility, you'll, or even outside the facility, you'll see they're putting glass in place. There's a lot of work taking place inside. Um, then the, right now, the old arena demolition is scheduled for the month of August. So we're hoping a lot of that work will be done inside the rink by that date. Uh, pool completion and ready for public won't be till the spring of 2025. Now the pool will be completed this summer into this fall, but we won't be opening it this fall because it doesn't make sense. Uh, so when the commissioning takes place, like the pool is part of the overall building commissioning and it all has to take place at the same time. Uh, so that will be very likely taking place over the month of September, the commissioning of the building, uh, late August. And then the final occupancy and deficiencies uh, will be completed by October 14th. So that doesn't mean the billing will be open before that, but with all the uh, for final occupancy and uh, deficiencies will be completed by October 14th. So you know always when you open a building, there could be small little things that maybe need to be addressed and whatnot. So that's what they're committing to. So we are on, on schedule right now. We've been working with Fitz and Snow, has been working with the other two contractors, main contractors, which is EMC and Acapulco Pools. And uh, the project is moving along, moving along nicely. So, oh, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> I know you might, I'm sure you have some questions too, but Mr. Chair, I was up to the rink this past Sunday and I noticed that they did fill in the hole for the, uh, the pool. Uh, and speaking to um, speaking to someone that works with uh, with Fitz and Snow, they said it was filled back in so that the equipment could get inside to do the concrete pouring and so forth. So, Frank, just to clarify, can we get that email? Is that is that going to be is that just internal? Are you worship? So I will actually. The email was sent to me. I just wanted to pretty it up. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, kind of thing. And I had a couple questions I wanted to ask our project manager on it because I think there's a few other items I'd like to just put in there as well. So I just received that uh, yesterday, I believe. So. Yeah. So so the, the the opening is October 14th, okay. And then you're telling me that <clears throat> the pool will the hole will be. Yeah. The. The hole will be dug for the pool. Concrete will be poured it, this this coming year. Okay, um, then there, there has to be a commissioner of inspection that sort of when is he or she is will he or she be in be, before the October fourteenth to sign off to say yes, it's a complete project. I'm just clarification. Yes, your worship. Yeah. So it, the commissioning will we're figuring will take over late uh, late August, like the month of September. It takes four to six weeks to do the commissioning. So those are a few more details. I wanted to put a few a bit more meat to those milestones because I figured you would have a few questions. So yeah. 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 So once I have a few more details, I will send those milestones out to uh, to council. So everyone's and in the Mr. Loop. Chair, I appreciate your appreciate your patience, but there's also the demolition 
of the old rink, which was part of the, the funding that we received. Frank, do we have an estimated cost? Is that in their estimates what it will cost to demolish the, the old Simmons? Uh, yes, it is, Your Worship, and we've actually already awarded that scope of work. Um, I can't oh. recall it right off the top of my head, but it's probably so that's in the 500,000 range. Okay, so, so the tender already has been awarded? Correct. Yes, they did get no, it. Okay, I, I don't recall it. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Uh, Frank, I just want to ask a question about, uh, has there been any uh, deficiencies in the construction in terms of, uh, I guess, the atrium part of the front part of the uh, new facility in terms of heating? Was, was anything uh, missed there that you're aware of uh, that they had to go back and redo? Do you know? So chair twill. So there's always things that come up when you're doing the project. They might have missed something here, missed something there. Those are re uh, referred to as change orders. And once you're doing a billing of this size and magnitude, there's always those little things. They might have missed a, a vent in a location. They might have missed a switch in a wall. They might have missed, a, you know, whatever kind of thing. Yeah, so no, so talking, there has been some I'm minor changes. The heating in the in the foyer, the building was that was that missed? Do you know? Uh, the atrium or the front part of the building was that was the amenities or the infrastructure uh, not put in place to provide the heating and they had to go back and kind of uh, re re reconstruct it yes so uh, chair to so yeah so there there was uh, I think there was a change order and Mike just reminded me here there was a change order of additional heating put in once they figured out the size of the footprint and all that and the effect the glass has on the heating versus a, a solid wall. So there is, as you'll realize, that atrium area, the front of area is a glassed area. So those are things when you go through it and you're realizing, okay, is this sufficient for this space? And was caught that, no, it's not. It didn't, uh, didn't, rec um, didn't uh, require them to rip stuff out or that kind of thing. It required additional um, infrastructure to be added or different ad additional equipment. And all that was caught before, you know, we had your ceilings in and those kind of things. So, so we are constantly coming across that. That's one thing Fitz and Snow and EMC have been really good. When they identify an issue or a problem, it gets brought to our attention right away. We come up with a solution. Sometimes it uh, doesn't require any additional funding. Other times it does. And that's just a normal sort of occurrence in a, especially a project of this size. Thank you. Move for adjournment. Just one second. I want to just say one thing, Mr. Chair. Speaking to people in the industry, I know because of our own business, uh, Frank and Mike, I've been told, have been exceptional uh, staff people to work with right from the start. Just take into consideration, this is a $36 million project. This is one of our, I th I'd say, Councilor Bernard, our largest uh, project that we've ever done as a city because the last one would have been Bell Alliance Center. So engineers and staff on the field have said that uh, Mike White and uh, Frank uh, Quinn have been excellent to work with. They they learn their they you know they get up to speed on some of the issues whether it's construction or management or just moving the timeline. So Frank and and, and keeping an eye on the, on the money side because I know the new director of uh, of uh, finance and administ administration would appreciate that fact. But no, again, I want to say thanks to them because this project will be uh, a glowing re result of many years of work. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, yes, thank you.